Good morning. This is Brother Des coming to you this morning again from Prophetic Bible Teachings. We've been teaching about hope. Today is the sixth lesson about hope. And this lesson today is entitled, The Bible Teaches Hope for the Future. And there are three little things we want to look at. Number one, the promise for future hope. Number two, the assurance of future hope while we live on earth. And three, the assurance of future hope after we leave this earth. As we look at the first point, the promise for future hope, there are four scriptures. The first scripture says over in Proverbs 23 and verse 18, it says, surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. As we look at these four things, there is a future. Number two, your hope will not be cut off. And, and number three, in hoping for your future, use wisdom and definitely it will not be cut off. The scripture for that is Proverbs 24, 14. Know that wisdom is such to your soul, that inner being, if you find it, there will be a future and your hope will not be cut off. Then fourth, the Bible instructs that with endurance, through encouragement, we might have hope. Over in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, it says, For whatsoever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Notice, we might have hope written for our instructions. That means everybody, black, white, blue, pink, green, purple, whatever color we have, all races, for everybody, there is hope. Notice what Micah said in Micah 7 and verse 7. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Notice, I, my, me, the personal pronouns. As we look at this, me individually. Yes, it's for all of us. But it's you and I that must look for this hope that's out there for us in the future. Curry Tanbone winds off this first point. This great woman of God, a Dutch watchmaker, worked with her father, rescuing Jewish people from the Nazis in World War II, what is known as the Holocaust. Her famous book, The Hiding Place. This is what she said, never, be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Yes, he's there and he's real. That's why when we look at our second point here, the assurance of future hope while we live on this earth. According to 1 Peter 3 and 15, notice what the scripture says, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. As we look at that scripture, four things jumped out. One, honor the Lord as being holy. He's not somebody to, oh Lord, you know, to take his name in vain. He is holy and we need to honor him. That's the one who gives us hope. Have faith in your future hope. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone. Anyone. Have faith that you believe in hope that is coming. Hope for the day. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for next year, hope for eternity, and have faith 
in your future hope. Never be ashamed to defend the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Never be afraid. And listen, do it with gentleness and respect. Look at others. Sometimes we may move around, oh, I'm saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and so on, and I'm bad. No, we're not better than anybody. We are all sinners saved by grace when we trust Jesus Christ and we have this hope. There is a reason that's found in God. And as I think of uh, the philosopher, the theologian, the theologian and priest, the Italian Thomas Aquinas. And this is what he said. Faith has to do with things that are not seen and hope with things that are not at hand. And yes, it goes back to the scripture. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through your faith and hope, you can move on today and tomorrow, regardless of what pressure may be upon you, how you may be marginalized or looked down upon because of a certain race or whatever. Remember, God made all people. And in the end, the Bible tells us in Revelation that all people, all nations and kindreds and all will be there. Heaven will not be for one color. Heaven will be for no color. We shall all be changed for we shall see Christ and be like he is when we meet him in the air. And so we move forward to the third point, the assurance of future hope after we leave this earth. There are a couple of things we, we want to, to look at this, about three things, really. First, it is useless to have hope only in this life. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of most people to be pitied. In fact, one translation said, of all men, most miserable. Some people live, they treat others so badly, they take advantage of, and you can look all around. Some people are not equally treated, right? And people live and treat people like this as if they will live forever. But the truth is, we will not be here forever. We will all die one day. And there is a tomorrow on the other side. So the second thing the Bible calls is that future hope. That future hope. So it's not only in this life with Christ, but we have hope in the future, which is called the hope of glory. In Colossians 1.27, the Bible says, to them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. With Christ in you, notice, when Christ is in you, means when you let him come into your life and he's a part of you, choose God. See, it's God's choice that you come in. No man can come to the Father unless the Spirit first draws him. And when the Spirit draws him, Jesus Christ does the saving and the Holy Spirit does the sealing and we have eternal life. With Christ in you, it's God's choice and he makes known to all believers, to all people, you can have this, the riches of the glory of this mystery. In Ephesians 1.8, so as we look in Ephesians 1.18, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that ye may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Note the key sectors here. The key sectors. Having 
You notice, having, not that I had, or I will have, or he has, but having, that's a present participle. Having, this hope of glory, you are having. What? That hope about the future. And what is it doing to you? It's giving. It's giving another present party simple. Giving you right now, right now, what? The feeling of security. Having. Giving. This is the hope of glory. Notice what Job said, though. In Job 18, Job 11 and verse 18, he said, And you will feel, what? Secure. Because there is hope. You will look around and take your rest in security. Notice these uh, four things here that will take place when you have hope in the future, not only of today, but also of tomorrow. What will happen? You will feel secure, that feeling. You will know there is hope, the knowing. You will look around the looking, and you will take the taking, your rest in security. The FKLT of the hope of glory. The feel, the know, the look, and the take. And you can relax because of the hope of glory. Question. Do you have this rest in security? Do you have the FKLT of the hope of glory? For Colossians 1.27 again, notice. To them God chose to make known his great, how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is the rest uh, mystery that Paul was talking about? Well, Jesus Christ gave it long time ago. The mystery. And things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father needeth, or neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. You hear it. The Father knows the Son, the Son knows the Father, and anybody who comes to him, you know both him and the Father, because Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Question, how humans get into this mystery? What Jesus said after that. Come unto me, all you who are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Notice what he said, come. Unto me, all, everybody, everybody. Are you weary today? The weary ones. Tired of, of what life is offering you. Tired of the, the, the pressure that's against you, the hatred and, and all the rest that's out there. And you are laboring and trying your best and, and weary in soul and spirit. He, Jesus said, I'll give you rest. Note, what Jesus Christ is saying I am not going to arrest you. When I come to you and I look at you, I'm not going to arrest you. I'm going to give you rest. Second, notice what he does. Not do. He said, come to me. And notice what he said. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in your soul. You must know what this yoke is all about. It was a wooden apparatus that was made, and, and one side had a, a round hole that, that when you clamp it around the neck of one animal, it also was clamped around the neck of the other animal. They were yoked together, and so they work together. And what Jesus Christ was trying to make known to us, he said, Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in your soul. Notice what he said. 
I am calling you to let you put your arms around who? Put my arms around your neck and your arms around my neck and let us yoke together, not choke. Let us yoke together. The Holy Spirit yoke, the twain one man. Note, he said, I am not going to choke you. You will not die through strangulation or asphyxiation, but you will have rest in your souls. You do not have to worry anymore. Why? Because my yoke the arm, my arm that you have put around your neck and yours around mine, you will find that this yoke, this connection through the Holy Spirit is easy. And my burden is light. My yoke, you putting my arm around your neck and you putting your arm around my neck. Jesus said, you will realize it is a nice hold. It's a hold of life. You will breathe. You will go for it. You will life. You'll have new life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passing away. And behold, all things are becoming new. Present participles. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Matthew 11, 27 through 30. Are you yoked with Christ? Call on him now. You will have the promise of hope for today, the assurance of hope also for today, and the assurance of hope for tomorrow. Amen. And God's blessing on you. Check it out. Check me out on prophetic Bible teachings. May God bless you this day. And if you don't know him, yoke up with Jesus Christ today and have eternal life. Brother Des, out. <laughs>